God, thank you for giving us time to hear from heaven. And we do settle our hearts before you. We, we ask you to break up that fallow ground, the hard places of our heart, so you can sow your word there, so that there can be a harvest of righteousness there, so that you can rule and reign there. We don't want to do that. We tried that. didn't work. We want you to, to be seated upon the throne in our hearts, that you would rule and reign, and that our lives would look different because of our submission to you, and that we would see the fruit of that relationship with you, that we'd see the fruit of the Spirit in our life. We long for that, Lord, so that you might enjoy that fruit. Thank you for tending to us and cultivating us and feeding us and watering us and refreshing us and washing us. You are so good to us. You treat us better than we deserve by far and then some. We're so thankful for you, Lord, that you love us despite us. You love us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. You love us. We love you. So, Lord, we tell you that we love you with attentive hearts tonight, ready to receive. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so tonight, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. If you're not already there, turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to read through the whole chapter, and then we'll go back and expound on just a few things tonight that will facilitate our application conversations and our time of prayer together. So let's read through the chapter. We'll start at verse 1. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. I know nothing against myself, yet I'm not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Now, these things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one against the other. For who makes you differ from one another? And what do you have that you didn't receive? Now, if you did indeed receive it, why do you boast as though you had not received it? You are already full. You are already rich. You have reigned as kings without us. And indeed, I could wish that you did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last, as men condemned to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonored. To the present hour, we both go hungry and thirsty and we're poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. We labor, working with our own hands, being reviled. We bless. Being persecuted, we endure. Being defamed, we entreat. We have been made as the filth of the world, the off-scouring of all things until now. I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers for in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach 
everywhere in every church. Now, some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord wills. And I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love and a spirit of gentleness? Okay. Paul is entering into the often uncomfortable but necessary part of pastoring, correcting the Corinthians' understanding of what it means to be a servant and a steward as a pastor. Those were the two words that he used in the first two verses, servant and steward. Listen to verses 1 and 2 again. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Now, he uses two specific words. The first one where he says servants, it means under rower. It means galley slave. It, if, you can, if you think back of a movie maybe you've seen of the Roman Empire where they had slaves in the bottom of the boat and they were chained and they were rowing to move the boat. He says this is what we are. We're servants. We're under rowers. We're galley slaves. We're not the captain. The Christ is the captain. Christ determines the direction. We're just here to serve. We're just here to work. We're servants. We're servants on one hand. But then he also says we're, we're stewards. He uses another specific term. A steward was also a slave, but a steward held a specific position where he was a steward of the master's household. So he was also a slave, but he was in charge of, he was a steward of something that wasn't his, but he was entrusted with a responsibility. And so that's why he says, moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. So it was really important for the health of the church in Corinth that they, on one hand, didn't put their pastors on pedestals, but also, on the other hand, that they didn't diminish their pastor's role. They didn't diminish their pastor's responsibility. They weren't dismissive to their pastor's authority. In the earlier chapter, he had said, we are just ministers. Remember, ministers meaning servants, specific term that meant errand boy. Yes, I'm, I'm an errand boy for our chief shepherd, for our senior pastor, Jesus. And hearing Paul's warning about not putting him or other ministers on a pedestal, it's also important to acknowledge that as inappropriate as it is to put a pastor on a pedestal, it's also just as inappropriate to throw them down in the dungeon or be dismissive about their role, their responsibility, or their authority. We have roles and responsibilities among equals. And so Paul saying to the church for their own benefit, let a man so consider us as servants of Christ. Yes, under rower, galley slave. I'm not the captain. I don't determine the direction. But we're also stewards of the mysteries of God. I've been entrusted with the management of God's household. And I have to give an account to God for that management. It's required in stewards that one be found faithful. And you can hear him making an appeal to these people that he loves. There's a verse in Hebrews 13 that references all of what we just read in 1 Corinthians 4. And it says this. Obey those who rule over you, who oversee you, and be submissive. For they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account to God. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable to you. I read that verse with a whole bunch of seriousness and solemnity. It's one day I am going to have to stand before Jesus and give an account of my stewardship my stewardship of this church. I'm going to have to give an account of my stewardship of this church who is you. Not these chairs. Not the fake wood. You. I'm going to have to stand before God and give an account of my stewardship. I'm responsible 
Yes, I'm a galley slave. I'm a servant. I'm an errand boy. But I've also been entrusted with a responsibility to care for something that Jesus really cares about. A, a responsibility to steward something that's not mine. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it's required in stewards that one be found faithful. Listen to that verse that we heard from Hebrews and a few other translations. Here's New Living Translation. Obey your overseers, obey your spiritual leaders, do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls, and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be to your benefit. And then the amplified version. Obey your spiritual... Okay. I got to do that once a quarter, okay? So the amplified version. Obey your spiritual leaders... And submit to them, recognize their authority, for they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare as men who will have to stand before God and give an account, an account of their trust, an account of their stewardship. Do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing or groaning, for that would not be profitable to you. So Paul, writing to this church that he planted and he pastored for some time, says, okay, guys, listen, I am a minister. I am dispensing a duty to another. I am my master's servant, and he has called me to be a servant leader, which means I'm also responsible to God to oversee. I'm responsible to God to be his steward over what he has entrusted to my care. Please help me to oversee with joy and not with drudgery, for ultimately that would be unprofitable for you. It wouldn't do you any good. See, there were some that were elevating Paul and his ministry beyond what was appropriate. But here in this chapter, he's saying there are some who were being dismissive of Paul's ministry beyond what was appropriate, beyond what was helpful and Paul wanted to be humble about his role, humble about his responsibility, humble about his God-given authority to steward the church. But we all know that humility is simply an honest assessment, an honest assessment. So Paul says, honestly, let a man so consider us as servants, under rowers, galley slaves of Christ. Christ is the captain. But guys, please also understand that I am a steward before God and will have to give an account to God for everything that happens here. I'm a steward of the mysteries of God, steward of what belongs to God, stewards who will have to give an account to God. And this is where courage of convictions comes from for servant leaders, those who are servants, who are also leaders. It's an odd combination. doesn't sound like they should go together. sounds like an oxymoron, but not in God's kingdom. This is exactly what he desires. Yes, I'm a servant. Yes, I'm a galley slave. Yes, I'm an under rower. I don't determine the direction. Christ is the captain. But my captain has entrusted something to my care. I'm responsible to him in how it's handled. So I'm a servant leader. I'm a servant of Christ, a steward of God, and it's required of me as a steward that I be found faithful. And all of us have a varying degree of this in different contexts. All of us have a varying degree of stewardship. All of us have a varying degree of accountability, including the Christians who were in Corinth. When Paul left Corinth to continue his missionary journeys, he entrusted the care of the church while he was away to the Corinthian Christians, and he's writing to the same Corinthian Christians to say that he who has entrusted something to their care is finding them unfaithful as stewards of what he's entrusted to their care. They were being dismissive. They were doing their own thing. And writing to them, Pastor Paul is saying to them, this has to be corrected because I am accountable to God for the health of what happens here. Yes, I'm a servant. Yes, I'm an under rower. Yes, I'm a galley slave. Yes, I'm not the captain. Yes, I don't determine the direction. But I am also a steward. 
And as a steward, I cannot be a coward and just let these things continue. I am going to come to you. We are going to talk about this. But I'm sending my assistant Timothy first. Remember that? And hopefully, he can remind you of all that I've taught you, all that I've entrusted to you, so that when I actually come to you, I can come in love and in gentleness rather than with a rod of correction. So, that's it for tonight. There's just a couple of things highlighted. Now, I have some questions for you that you guys can unfold or unpack or ask each other in your application conversations. If you want to write them down, you can, or if you want to try to remember them. We mentioned that all of us have a varying degree of stewardship. We've all been entrusted with something by somebody. It may be God, it may be our parents, maybe a teacher, maybe a boss. And something has been entrusted to us. What has been entrusted to your care, to steward? Who was it that entrusted it to you? Who are you accountable to? What does it mean to be found faithful as a steward? Why is it so important in God's kingdom to be a servant leader? How are humility and honesty connected? And how can you serve Christ and also submit to others? I'll read them again. What has been entrusted to your care? Who has entrusted it to you? Who are you accountable to? What does it mean to be found faithful? Why is it so important to be a servant leader? How are humility and honesty connected? And how can you serve Christ and also submit to others and also lead others? Hmm. Well, Lord, here we are tonight and we've heard from your word. A few choice morsels to chew on and to see that you are good and that you are consistent and you are consistently calling us to yourself. You're consistently filling up our cup to overflowing. And out of the overflow of a heart that's so grateful for your grace, we desire to bring love and grace and mercy to others, to be Aaron boys, Aaron girls, to be ambassadors, to do the work to get people to where they need to go to, to be willing to serve, willing to wash feet, knowing that we never rise above our master who's given us such a great example. Help us, Lord, to also begin to understand how we can hold to the courage of our convictions, the convictions that you've given us as you've entrusted something to our care. Help us to navigate that well, to steward that well. Help us to be found faithful for whatever you've been individually entrusted to us. And then collectively, let that be a blessing to you and to us. We know that your Holy Spirit can do this, and we surrender afresh to you. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.